on this computer. Hello, everybody. This is the um, lab number five. We are going to discuss input output. And I'm going to start from here. And I kindly request for anyone to uh, do whatever I'm doing in here. First of all, I'm going to enter in um, this website, Apply Computer Science, acs.asa.ro slash java. And as you can see on the lab, in the lab, in activity number five, which is input output, we have here several, if I'm staying with the mouse over, we have here several seminars. One is uh, Java application IO, the second one is with JUnit, and the third one is the JUnit with uh, zip. And, um, and in here, please click everybody to download. So click on it and then download. And I'm going to download and kindly ask where are you working in Eclipse? Give me a few seconds. In Eclipse, most likely you have switch workspace, other. This is your workspace. Uh, I assume Sabrina, Facultate and Doi, Semestru Doi, Java workspace is correct. I assume yes. Okay, so I'm going to uh, come back into uh, Google Chrome and to uh, download this into Java Workspace here. And uh, no, into again, where I have it, file, switch workspace, other, I'm not going to switch, Java Workspace, yes, here. I don't understand why, okay. Java workspace. In here, I'm going to download this S number 05. And please download where you have the um, workspace of your Eclipse program. Okay. Once it is downloaded, what I'm going to do right now, I can close GitHub, which is referred and uh, directed from uh, ACS. So I'm going to close this. And then I'm moving to Windows Explorer and into Windows Explorer and in Eclipse, uh, I would like to um, extract the zip. So this virtual machine, you don't need it. So I'm going to extract the zip. Oh, here you have the link, good, fair enough, sorry. So I'm going to extract the zip. And as you can see in here, I want to have the zip for Java workspace. I have this zip that I have downloaded. Everybody in the workspace, let's right click and extract here. And I have obtained my project, which is with JUnit. I don't care about JUnit. I'm just using to, for you to get used with the examination. And here is a full blown Eclipse project. What I'm going to do is to import this. So everybody file, import, file, import. And then in here I have existing projects into workspace, next. And as you can see in here, I'm going to browse and to select the entire workspace. So where I have everything in the workspace. And from here, I don't want all these assignments to be imported. I just wanted to have my new uh, unzipped, unarchived folder, which of course is not Giraffa, is not Hello World, is not High Cups, blah, 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 deselect all. All I want to do is just to select this one, A05. And for this one, I'm going to click, click Finish. And in this one right now, because of the Java um, build path, I may have issues and uh, these issues, no, it's fine. These issues in JUnit evaluation, we are not going to discuss because invoice is not filled. Now I have the specs, the requirements, exactly in here as I have into, um, let's say an examination. And all I have to do in this program, in this lab, is to create an invoice class, which is able to create objects, to instantiate objects, for representing each um, invoice. We will have only one. And because we are discussing about input and output streams, 
we are going to save an object of this invoice into a file and then read from that file. Therefore, what I'm going to do, I'm going to implement everything is requested in here. So I need an array of prices by storing the prices. So I'm just typing private and everybody is going to do like this, double, and uh, this is the prices in plural. Is okay the font size for everybody? Should I make it a little bit larger? Like this is fine. Is for uh, anybody not fine? It's all right, then, then it's fine. Thank you very much. If not, I can uh, enlarge a little bit more, but I think it's perfect. Let's move forward. And right now I would have private, an array of int is the units about. And then finally I have private, an array of string is for descriptions. And as long as I have this, I can allow to create the constructor. So public, um, let's type Sabrina. I, I'm leaving you to type, I'm just di dictating. So public, the name of the constructor is the name of the class in case sensitive terms. So invoice, good, very good. Open, uh, uh, open a round bracket, and then we passing as parameters three parameters: an array of int, an array of int units, then comma, an array of double prices, and then finally comma the third parameter, an array of string products. Descriptions, very good. Now let's implement uh, immediately after um, begin statement. So is the bra exactly enter and automatically the end bracket. Very good, this dot units equals units from the stack. So the blue field is going to uh, receive as parameter the reference, the pointer of the brown units from the stack of the uh, constructor. And uh, then there, Exactly, good, very good, thank you very much. So we have the units, the prices and descriptions inside the field of the classes taking uh, from the uh, stack of the constructor assigned by value, but there are references pointer, so they are pointing in the same area of memory. I don't care too much in this moment. Let's move forward, I have the control still. And for get and set in order to not lose tempo, let's create them, right? So right click and in the source, you have in here generate getters and setters and then i'm going to request, request each one of you to share the screen but not now to see that you have no issue give me a few moments more to go through the getters and setters and to create the main program and then we are going to do step by step so right click in the middle you have source option and then generate getters and setters click you have then this wizard and for getters and setters, as long as you are selecting everything, as you can see, you have getters and setters. I'm expanding it. So get description, set descriptions, get prices, set prices, and so on and so forth, generate. And now I have get and set. This is done. Now, for the moment, would be enough. Let's move forward. And move forward meaning to create in the prog main OOP. So I'm going to file save this or control S is the same, save. And going into my project, into ProgMain OOP.io, and in here, as you can see, you have everything commented out. So uh, we are going to do something like this for the moment, for the moment. I'm copying only statements from line six to 10. So control C and I'm pasting in here. And now let's focus about, so I have created this object from my class where I'm passing as a parameters entries from my invoice. So I have 10 bytes for the, uh, if you want 10 bytes, uh, eight bytes with the value 10 for the price of the first product, which is going to be a t-shirt. Then I have four bytes for 12. So yes, I need uh, for 12, uh, storing TELF because it's int 
four bytes. And then the string is a variable, universal text format, where I have an, a byte with value zero, we are going to see in a hex editor, and the length, how many letters I have for storing t-shirt. And this would be the first line from my invoice. The second line is going to be the prices, then another eight bytes with value 11, the number of the units, eight, and then finally the month. And actually in our invoice, we are going to have three items. And in here, because we are going to have three items, all I want to do to uh, see something in, in, in here, I'm going to say system.out.println. And in this system.out.println, Oh my God, okay, here I say finish IO. And once I have done this, I'm going to save it. Okay, the JUnit evaluation uh, is uh, saying something like, yes, I have the JUnit, but for me is if I'm going into this class, okay, I have some errors which are normal. Let me pinpoint these errors. So this save invoice to the file. This is, um, let's say, um, a method which I did not implement. Therefore, what I'm going to do and then request screen from each one of you, I'm going to continue and say in here, okay, I need these two extra lines as well. I need to save the invoice and to receive the invoice from the file. Control C and then Control V, and that's it. So now I have uh, this light bulb saying, look, I don't know what is this method, you should define it. And I'm going to define immediately, but I'm waiting for you to do this. So once you have done this, please observe that um, this method that I have it in here, I can t have it simply like void, but also I can uh, have it uh, to return something in here as long as it's calculation from uh, uh, total. So I would say here double result equals and say here, okay, the total invoice equals and then I'm con going to concatenate with result. Now let's move forward and to keep it very simple. So I'm going to do two extra things into invoice Java because I'm saying here implements clonable. I want to do the overwrite and you'll understand better in the lecture when we are discussing on Friday. Um, we are discussing about the annotation, including this override annotation and meta annotation. And then finally, what I want to overwrite, public object clone method, which may throw, throws here, as long as I uh, remember, clone node supported exception. So here I want to have it throws clone not control space. My control space uh, is not appearing in this remote desktop action. So Sabrina, please control space. Thank you very much. And then I have begin statement, enter automatically, I have end statement. And here I would say yes, invoice R result equals null. And finally, I would say R equals from the super, which in my case is the Java lang package uh, class object. I want to have a clone. And because that clone is returning object, I'm going to cast it to invoice. This is one thing. And finally, because we are uh, going deeper and deeper, I'm returning this R. Otherwise, I have issues. As you can see, my clone is not ready yet. OK, so return R. And in here, I'm going to take field by field. And for instance, for description, I want to, because this is an array of string, I want to take from this the descriptions of the product, and then I have clone method. Now is a debate if clone method into arrays is implemented correctly. We can play around and fool around with the debugger to see this. Then we have the units. Again, this dot units dot clone. And finally, we have the prices, and that's it.
Now, all we have to do, doesn't matter, we are going to create empty methods for a while, for a minute. We will have, again, prices and clone, and clone is done as a simple implementation right now here. Now, coming back into our frog main, right? I have this light bulb in here, where is my um, virtual hand. And then when I am click on it, I obtain a pop-up menu like with create method, save invoice to file, and is receiving a string in type in class invoice. Yes, I want this, double click. And I have this method, which is empty for the moment. Now, moving forward, I'm going again in prog main. And finally, this is the second and last light bulb is saying create method read invoice from file and calculation of the total of the invoice. Of course, pass, of course passing the parameter as a string of my file, where is the invoice. I'm double click on it and as well, I'm obtaining something like this. In this moment, my methods are empty. Of course, they are doing nothing, but as you know from the previous lecture, we are able, and seminar lab, we are able to run right now. So all I, all I want to see in each, um, each uh, screen sharing from your side, I want to see that we are able to run this program main OOP, of course, without writing into anything, without doing too much. I'm going to obtain results zero for the moment, but I want to see is compiling. So first of all, select here under this package under sources, eu.asa.io, Progmain OOP, Object Oriented Programming IO. Left click, right click, run as Java application. So I want to see for each one of you, this is finish IO, finish IO, ah, finish IO, sorry. So spelling, finish IO. I'm going to run again. As you can see right now in this combo box of run, I have Progmain OOP IO. So I'm going to see this. And the same importance, like in examination, I want to run this JUnit evaluation.java. So left click on it. This is the second conf run configuration. Left click, right click, run as JUnit test. And of course in here, when I'm running as a JUnit test, what you can see? I can see the green side in here. This is a test that passed. This is blue and is bad because it's not green. This is red and is the same bad because I cannot see it with green. And this is good as well. Uh, let me show you what I'm referring to. So in here you have source code in the source code in the examination. You don't have it. So for instance, how I have tested the clone, I have created invoice one and inv invoice two, and then I'm asserting not the same. And if these are true then I'm going into one by one to check out, you know very well, equals equals is checking out if my array is pointing into same area of memory, random access memory, volatile memory in heap. And of course is not because clone, clone did its job. And of course they are equals in terms of content, but not in terms of memory. You can see this in the debugger. So this is why this method is green. So for you, don't care too much as long as you have all the tests run and all are green. Otherwise, let me show you. What means for me, for instance, to test invoice right to the file? I'm going to call save invoice to the file. In this moment, my method is empty, so it's doing nothing. And therefore, after I'm saving this data into the file, I'm expecting to obtain some results. And then finally, I'm expecting to have a certain value for total of these results. If you are paying attention in here, then if I'm multiplying nine with 10, because it's the num number of the units of t-shirts, nine with unitary price, price per uh, piece is 10, nine multiplied with 10 is 19, plus 110 is 200, plus 81 is 281, then I'm asserting, I'm checking out if this 281 with an uh, error uh, 0 0.5 is having the total. And of course, if it's correct, then it's going to be this green. But it's not correct because, because when I'm going into invoice, my implementation of saving the invoice to the file and reading invoice from, from the file are empty. So I'm implementing nothing. So before going forward, let's go through each one of you PC and to see that I'm able to do two things. One is run the main program and obtain this. 
second when I'm running again I'm running the J unit and of course I'm going to obtain green blue red green so please Sabrina stop share screen otherwise I'm going to okay thank you very much and let's go one by one so first is Joanna Michaela Murarica can we move a little bit slower yes that's why I'm going now step by step for each one of you to see if you are a little bit backwards so i'm going to i want to see joanna michaela murarica uh, the screen please okay alexandra pansiru then i'm another computer yes please do your best next time to be on a computer where you can share the screen so alexandra pansiru please share your screen No, please write the code in the same time with me. I'm going to commute again. So please do in the same time with me, Sabrina. Please share your screen. Guys, I did not have these issues on Friday with the Romanian language. So yeah, please keep a while in Eclipse and double click on the invoice. Double click on the invoice. And let's stick here for a while. So guys, you have two minutes to in a way or another get this source code right down into your project if you want you can copy paste from the internet of course from the github but i would not recommend please type yourself in order to combine the visual memory it's not better it's not better it saves times for now but it's not better because you must combine the visual memory with auditive one and with kinetic memory which means you have and must to combine these two in order to have something into your mind after this so simply if you want you can copy paste of course i cannot control you what you are doing right now but my proposal is to write down what you have in here and let's uh, be serious this get and set have been generated automatically so all you have to do is just to implement these three fields and the constructor and uh, again sabrina i'm going to request remote control please approve it thank you And as you can see, this is the, so besides the constructor, I'm going to stick with the constructor. You have only generated methods, the get and set method, and then the method of saving into a file and reading from the file, which are empty for the moment. Ioana, yes, I will, I'm going to see immediately, but I'm sticking to have time for everybody to see from the Sabrina. Okay. Okay. If I'm moving into ProgMain, can you say, yeah, of course, yes, indeed. If I'm moving to ProgMain, as you can see here, all I did is to copy paste these statements from 6 to 12. And then in line 24, in addition, I have added this system out print line, which involves to show results which of course right now is zero so i'm staying here a little bit again so if you are uh, paying attention you write down only six line of coding now i cannot be on time it's easier to watch and understand mm. i disagree with this but uh, okay, we are going forward with the guys who are able to uh, to do whatever is necessary to do in order to keep the pace. Okay. Good. This being said, I'm going to uh, stop share screening and uh, then please, uh, Sabrina, stop share screening. And let's move forward. Alexandria, please share your screen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Could you please run? You have uh, the play button, and yeah, and the, you have a combo box in there. Please expand for the play button. 
Ne. I also paying attention rather than I need. Uh, no. So Adina, again, you have to write down. You are not paying attention. If you are paying attention, it's like you are watching a movie, Game of Thrones. So I don't want this. I want to you to be fully connected with me and to do whatever I'm doing in here. It's not a lecture, it's a lab. And in the lab, we are going to do in my terms this. Okay. So besides this, so again, yeah, in the play, J unit evaluation. Yes, of course I am right, because I, I did a lab with the guys on Friday and was like this, and with one exception, all of them were able to do in the same time with me. Period is exactly like in the lab in the normal room. Thank you for understanding. Very good. We are moving forward, so uh, it's going to be better and better. Uh, then Alexia Ionescu, please share your screen. Stop sharing. Uh, okay, Alexia Ionescu. Let's move forward, Alexia. Okay, good. Then I'm Bruce Alice. Good, Andrei Dumitrescu. Good, thank you very much, Andrei. Okay, so you are running, you are having the same exactly. No, 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 leave it like this. Okay, and if you are running again, I don't want the J unit. Also in the play sign, in the middle of the toolbars, you have that combo box. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. We are moving forward. Stop share screening, Andrei Dumitrescu. Let's move forward. Andy Greco. Good play. It's perfect. And also play uh, in the combo box. I want to see the J unit. And not coverage, not coverage, a little bit left on the play button. Andy, please left a little bit the mouse in the left. And you have the combo box and play the uh, J unit. I was I was dropped off by the application, not by the application, but my internet was unstable. So I recommend to you to use um, Vodafone or Orange, so the mobile, in order to be. Um, to not have this variation of the bandwidth that's why i have been taken out so let's resume the discussion i was on the andy greco please could you share your screen again thank you andy let perfect perfect because now i see this but again i don't need the coverage i just need it's good it's perfect good let's move forward so for the next one the next in the list at least for my list what i have it in here is Balan Yonus Daniel. Please share your screen. Good, if you are running because I don't see the output window. Uh, no, 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 in the play, yeah, that one. I assume is prog main whatever if 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 wait a second wait a second don't be so fast you are faster than me so go in the left panel in package explorer prog main OPIO yes left click right click run as exactly Java application okay yes okay proceed proceed for the moment Okay, let's see, good. Let's see the error. So if you are going in prog main OOP, no, in prog main OOP, prog main OOP. Double result, okay. So the result, first of all, the value is not, no, 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 wait a second, hold on. Go in line 24, statement from line 24, and in there, simply concatenate, concatenate plus result. Not because the, there is a t immediately after the, yeah, the course. Good, thank you. Result, result, result. Good, save and run again.
errors. I don't know you have why you have errors. Give me a few moments. I'm going to request remote control. Please approve it. I want to see why you have errors. Okay, thanks. And if I'm going into JUnit now, it's me in there. So this clone is not implemented. That's why you have. So here, as you may see, protected. I don't want protected. I want to have it public. I know where if you are generated is going to be protected, but being protected is not visible outside of this class. And in here, I'm outside of this class and I was not able to call this. If I'm running this one more time, the last one is rem remaining in the queue as a configuration, rogue main OOP here. If I'm running this one more time, as you can see in here, I have, I'm going to, yeah, in, in console output and then I'm, you see, you have finish IO and then zero, zero, double click again and coming back into this, which is fine. If I'm running right now the JUnit evaluation test, run as JUnit and then as you can see what I have as well. So green and then you are see immediately here in JUnit. You have green, blue, red, green. Thank you very much. Please stop sharing your screen. Move forward. So this was Balan. Thank you, Bogdan Nikolae. Nikolae, sorry. I don't have Eclipse. Okay, but you should, do you have IntelliJ idea or something else? Okay, so next time I would like any one of you to have installed the proper environment, doesn't matter is in the virtual machine or is normal, we have to go one by one and to be consistent. Let's move forward. Ioana, please share your screen. Okay, Ivan Vlad, please share your screen. Thank you very much. Ah, Ioana, Ioana, this is good. Okay, let's move forward, Ioana. Go in Eclipse and in here, yeah, it's perfect. And I want to see the run of the J unit as well. So go into combo box. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. Stop share screening. We are moving forward. Ivan Vlad. Thank you, Ivan Vlad. This is good. Thank you very much, Ivan. Moving forward. Uh, next in the list is Zipa Dragos. I have IntelliJ, it's no problem. As long as you have the course in there, you, you type it, then we are able to run. So, okay. We are, okay. This is Eclipse in here. Okay. Ah, IntelliJ. Okay, perfect. And in IntelliJ, leave it the J unit. I don't care for a while. For the moment, let's stick to, yeah, exactly, exactly. Thank you, uh, Marius. But for the moment, I want to see the run, normal run of the, uh, your sample. So, no, 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 no invoice. Hey, focus, is prog main? Yeah, thanks, run, good. And you have a lot of errors because that package does not exist and that package does not exist because for instance, yes, but 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 here again, J is does not does not exist because you don't did, did not attach the lib right the library. So if you want, let's stick for a while in here and let's um, how to say let's comment the entire import side. May I get your screen so to focus on this. So request remote control. Here somebody in the chat. Uh, is saying go in J, in J unit, click on J unit and alt enter. So go click alt enter, alt enter. Okay, and here is no replace. Okay, yeah, package private. No, 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 I don't want this. Let, give me, I have the control. So in here in J unit, I assume on the project, I have to right click and then to to do to do to do you know three factor i want to see the properties of this let me let me focus window file build rebuild whatever one tools okay window 
And in here, let me put it this way. From, from where I can set the environment. So I want to, is a little bit. let's do this way. So I'm moving forward and for everybody who has no. Intel, yeah, see, please go ahead. For everybody that I have um, uh, IntelliJ, let's leave it for a while like this. We are typing everything and I'm going to fix, fix it after this. So let's move forward. And for IntelliJ, I'm going to fix it before ending this uh, seminar. I did not answer when it was my turn. I had a bug, I fixed it now. Okay, Alexia Ionescu, please share your screen. So leave it for a while with IntelliJ like this. I'm going to... Um, find out together with you at latest in the break, how you should do it to run in IntelliJ as well. So let's move to Alexia. Alexia, please share your screen. Thank you, Dragos. Alexia? Alexia, okay. Eclipse. Good. So, no, it's okay also in, no, it's, it's going to work in IntelliJ, but uh, leave it like this for a while. So let's run this, Alexia. Perfect, but you don't have it. I'm going to uh, request remote control. Please approve it. You don't have the total. Okay, here I'm going to say concatenate with the total or whatever you want to have it. So here is double uh, total or whatever I want to call it equals. And then I have something like this. And uh, finally, if I'm going to run, I would say run show main OPIO. I'm saving. Now I'm running my it's zero, which is fine. And if I'm going in JUnit, left click, right click, run as JUnit test and allow access because it's the debugger, and then I have this. Thank you very, ma very much, we are moving forward. So after this, we have uh, Klaba Chirma. Irma, could you share your screen, please? Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. It's good. It's very good. I have it in here. Thank you very much. Let's move forward because uh, we are running out of time and I don't want to happen this. So, Damon Lepirda. Good. Thank you very much. It's okay. It's okay. Let's move forward. Matej Skurazvan. Good, let's move forward. The next is uh, Mazzini Sebastian. Good, thank you very much. I assume, okay. Miron Cristina. Okay, no problem. Just, Miron, just, just run, run. Okay, this is fine. Now you know what to do in the future. Then let's move forward. Next in the, my list is Naum Laurentiu. Uh, that's me. I'm on my phone, so I'm going to start oh, okay, the video. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. Uh, ah, it's on the front camera. <laughs> yeah, no, stop the video. Because, ah. Okay, ah. so, ah, okay. Next time, try to enter from the laptop as well, and uh, then it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it, it's very laggy on my on your laptop is very laggy, right? Oh, uh, I think we missed Naum is going to join again. Then, uh, next show you, Marius Andre. Uh, okay, but, but I want to have it, okay. We lost Laura. Yes, yes, yes. We know we lost him. Okay, let's move forward. Uh, he's going to join again. And then we have Payu Alex. Uh, now I understood what you are saying. Uh, your uh, laptop is uh, slower. We, we will find out a way. Even this from the camera is okay. Uh, then it's fine in here. 
This is uh, Alex Bio. Good. Thank you very much. So is running. And let's move forward. Finally, uh, we have Sabrina, and that's it. Sabrina, may I continue on your laptop, please? Yeah, it's not a problem. It's not like it's fine that it's starting in there. Yes, 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 yes. It is good at least. Uh, yeah, uh, you were on the chair, so it's fine. Chillax. Good. Let's move forward. And uh, then uh, here, I want to implement into the invoice this save, right? So right now, you understood what is my request to you. Uh, Sabrina, I'm going to request remote control again. <laughs> okay. And uh, then finally, in here, I'm going into invoice. And let's focus, guys, on saving invoice into the file. And here, I want, again, to combine the visual memory of yours, your eyes, with your ears, what you are hearing when I'm uh, saying in here different things. And then to combine this with uh, your kinetic memory, because you have to type. And then this is the way you learn. You have to, after this, to stay with yourself and simply type code. By, you are going to learn by typing code and thinking, of course. So let's move forward. And here, I'm going to save first the invoice on the, into the binary text file. And here, I'm going to type data out. And I will kindly ask Sabina to control space because I do not have this key combination in remote. Good. So you see in there, if please uh, control space again, Sabina, and take for a while. The, it, control space. Data output stream. You see, I have the second option in here is a class you, is with white C from class inside of green ballet or round circle. And it's saying, look, this is a class. And as you can see, the package is Java IO. Please get used to uh, work with control space because as you can see in here, automatically my control space actually did what? Did the um, import in here of the data input stream. Let's move forward. And if we are moving forward, we have, yes, our data output stream. I'm going to call it out uh, equals null. Now, if I want to uh, work in a traditional Meller, I would have, for instance, try catch. And here, if there is any exception, here, if there is any exception, I would have input output exception. So again, control spray Sabrina. Yes, from Java IO, I need this job input output exception, IOE. And here I have the beginning of the statement, enter automatically. And I simply say IOE dot print stack trace would be enough for a while for me. And this is, let's say, the traditional approach where I'm going to uh, create my uh, out in here inside. But anytime I can translate it into try catch with resources. The try catch statement is the one with round uh, squares in order to uh, call the auto closable interface from auto closable interface, the close method. But for a while, let's stick in the traditional manner. And in here, okay. In here, I want to uh, type the following. So first of all, I need a file output stream. So Sabrina, please. Yeah, I'm going to answer. Wait a second, hold on. Which print stack trace? I'm, I have chosen the one without parameters, as you can see for a, for a moment. It was a comment in the chat from Mateus Turazwan. So as you can see here, I have IOE dot print stack trace without parameters. Now, from here, I'm going to select the third option, which is, yes, file output stream. And here, I'm going to say, sorry, is my mistake sometimes i'm uh, my voice is really loud so equals new i'm allocating memory and then i have file output stream again control space sabrina thank you and here as you can see i'm going to select this one with the string as a name yes of course without parameters i'm showing in here it's good so in here, this file output stream with parameters is going to have the string file name, right? I have typed it. Doesn't matter. The name is a parameter that I'm receiving. And this is I'm passing as a parameter for the constructor file output stream. Good. This being said, I'm going to say 
buffered output s control space Arduino please buffered output stream perfect boss without double s new buffered output stream again control space yeah and here i'm selecting this and i'm putting the fos object from preview statement as you can see so i have declared the file output stream and this file output stream are re I, I, i'm wrapping inside this object bos from buffer output stream and finally i have equals with new data with capital d new data output stream control space i mean this yeah exactly and here i'm going to have bos so as you can see i have three wrappings this is was the first one file output stream then the file output stream i'm saying buffered output stream and and i can explain why let's see if i have time and then buffered output stream is wrapped inside data output stream for this moment um i want to uh, stop share screening from sabrina and let me show you my screen for a moment with the uh, lecture capture notes because if we would have lecture in up front would be much better but again we are going to adapt to this. So let me show you. This is a little bit of one minute lecture in a way or another. So sharing my screen, you see my screen, I assume, right? So first of all, we are working with streams at a byte level, not char level. As you can see in here, I'm going to increase this 150. First of all, I'm working with classes and interfaces from package Java IO. And I have in mirror what I have for input, I have for output, right? And right now let's stick a little bit for the output. What we had, we had a file output stream, as you can see in here. This file output stream is implementing an abstract class output stream, which is having an abstract write method. Abstract meaning, yes. Let's not talk about that, Vlad. Okay, okay, let, guys, let's focus on the lab. It's more important. So we have output stream, which is an abstract class, meaning I have an abstract method, which means abstract method, I do not have any implementation, it is abstract. Then file output stream is getting this, is inheriting and is saying, look, I'm implementing right, but I'm implementing natively. So meaning I'm implementing in C, C++ because I have different, uh, software interrupts on the Linux and Mac OS. I'm inter interrupt 18 in hex 80 in Windows. Most likely I'm with interrupt 21st 21 in hex. So I have to implement in C in order to write something on the hard disk. So this is the file output stream. Then a picture is doing more than 1000 words. I'm doing what I'm getting the file output stream. Let's stick to this second part of the image and I'm getting from random access memory sound bytes and I'm writing out into the hard disk into the storage doesn't matter is solid state hard disk or is a normal hard disk but these bytes where i'm ranking in here i'm going to wrap them inside the data output stream which data output stream if you are paying attention in here is a class as you can see where i have methods like write short write int write four bytes write universal text format which means write a string so i have different methods because I have implemented data, I, Sun Microsystem and now Oracle is implementing this interface data output, right? And is inheriting the filter output stream. So therefore what I did, and now I'm stop share uh, screen, uh, stop uh, share uh, my screen. So Sabrina, please go uh, ahead and share your screen again, please. Okay. Fine, thank you. I'm going to request remote control. So what I did in here, I did those, uh, I did those wrapping. And first of all, as you can see in here, first wrap was with this object FOS file output stream for from file output stream class. Then I have included via constructor into a buffer at output stream, which means I don't want to write on the disk immediately. I have one byte. I want to wait for a while to buffer that input and then to spell it outside into the storage and then finally each byte by byte from that stream i want to wrap it 
and to consider, for instance, uh, strings, to consider, uh, to consider array of int or int or double and so on and so forth. So data which are meaningful to me. So long story short, let's see what I'm doing right now. And uh, first of all, I don't want to forget. So here, besides closing the catch, I would have out.close. This is one thing. And then between these two statements, right, starting with line 78, for instance, between these two statements, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say something like this, for statement int i equals zero, semicolon, right, i less than prices dot length, because this is an array, so please pay full attention. I'm referring to this array of prices and I'm getting the length of this array. So as you can see in here, I have I less than prices uh, dot length because it's an array semicolon. And now my incrementation is going to be I plus plus. And finally, start statement square like this. And then I would say my out object, write what? Not write anything. I need a write double, for instance, and then I need to write double the, as you can see here, what I have double my prices, prices indexed by I, prices indexed by I. Then, without any space, without any separator, I'm going to write again an int. So I have written eight bytes, which is my double. Now I'm going to write four bytes, which is my int, from my units of index i. And then finally, I'm going to, from out, to write universal text format, UTF. And here I have my strings, which is descriptions, desks, descriptions indexed by i. And finally, this is done. So I did this, I'm moving forward. When I'm moving forward, if you are paying attention, I have to do more or less the same, but vice versa. So the write is going to be transformed in read and the data output stream is going to be transformed in data input stream. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this carefully, these statements from save invoice to the file, only the content of it. Control C, copy. Here, I would have my uh, invoice and I would say, okay, I would need double, for instance, total is 0.0, .0 is my invoice double. I'm returning this total. And right now, inside to it, thank you, Sabrina, for providing me the access to your laptop. I'm going to paste. And of course, I have to start modification, first of all. So here is not data output stream anymore. I'm in read invoice from the file. So I'm reading data from the hard disk into random access memory back again. And I want to calculate. You, you may say, why you are doing this? Because you are in the same program. Yes, but I can be in a different program and to run after 10 minutes or after two days. I want to uh, take advantage of having the data stored into database, in my case, into the file, and simply read from that file. And therefore, instead of putting data outside into the hard disk, I'm reading from it, I'm going to use file input stream. And if I don't like it, if I do not have, for instance, import done, input stra, stri, and then control space, Sarina, because I want to be sure, thank you that I have my uh, input stream. Of course, right now I have an error uh, correctly inserted. Now I have to translate this also in file input stream. And of course I have the string file name, which I'm typing in here to be more consistent to have string file name. Let's move forward and moving forward, meaning yes, I have this. Of course I can leave it false like this. And then I have buffered input stream. So here I'm going to use buffered input again with control space. Here is buffered input stream. And here, of course, I have a FIS, F-I-S. Okay. And finally, 
Here, the out is actually in, to be more consistent and more clear for everybody. This is in. In the end, we will see where we are going to close this, of course. I have deleted. And this is BIS. BIS. This is input, is input, of course. And here, I have input and BIS. Right now, actually, I did it in the mirror, vice versa. I did all the steps that I did before. Okay, so I have something like this, new data input stream, and I'm going to save it. Why is saying like this, BIS, uh, file input stream, and then buffered input stream, but why is saying, let me, light bulb in here, data input stream, yes. Type, ah, in, in, okay, okay, okay. Data input stream, I did not uh, put it correctly. Now it's fine. So what I did, I modified everything. Instead of having data output stream, data, uh, file output stream and so on, I put it input because I, now I'm planning to read from the hard disk into random access memory. Of course, out is not available anymore. And what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to delete this for. Please pay attention. I don't know how many elements of the invoice I have in my file. Of course, you may say, yes, you know, price.length. Yes and no, because I don't know if I would be in another program and I don't want to create another program because we are running out of time. But if I would be in another program, then I really don't know how many uh, records I have into my file. Therefore, I'm going to do a trick. Um, implementing something like while true, which means forever, is a loop forever loop but this is going to crash and that's why i need another try catch nested try catch into my try catch is going to crash when my file is ending and here i'm planning to catch this with end of file eof exception so please have in a control space and here i would stated e of e whatever name of the object i want exception and for me, this is not exception. For me, long story short, this is going to happen when my file, uh, final file uh, is ended. And therefore, what I'm going to say in here, instead of out, of course, I have in. Instead of write, of course, I have read. But I have to be very careful because if I write first item, a double, then it's mandatory to read a double. And in here, of course, this method of read is receiving nothing. Therefore, I'm going to declare, for instance, before entering and jumping into this try catch, I'm going to declare, let me finalize here. First of all, this is reading. And this is read UTF, okay? And of course, here I do not have descriptions anymore. So I'm going to delete them. And of course, here I have in, and here I have in. Now, if, as you can see here in statement on line 79 in our case, write double. So first item that I have written down on the hard disk into the file, into my file, was an item of eight bytes because double is eight bytes. Then I have to read those eight bytes and I'm going and I'm planning to put in this. So I would have something like double, I'm typing price, not in plural. And this is a variable declared within this function, within this method. Therefore, it's going to be on the stack of this method into random access memory. So I would have double a price. Eventually, I would say is 0.0, .0 but not necessarily. Semicolon, then I would need another variable, which is int unit, which is zero, let's say, but I, I, I can afford also to not instantiate these values. I'm putting in there. And finally, for instance, for this thing of description, semicolon, I do not instantiate anything. Here, I would say the price is equal with what is returning by reading from the first line of my file is reading eight bytes. Then I would have the unit, and then I would have the description. And for me, I don't want to store this anywhere, but for each iteration, I'm planning what? First of all, to print on the screen. So system.out.printf instead of print line is like in C language, printf in here. And my format is going to be between 
sorry, between codes is going to be like this, backslash n to get to the next line, then space, and then I would have read, record, and then finally, with this record, I would say, yes, I need for each element to store everything. So I would say something like, yes, I want to see the price equals, and here as a percentage for price is going to be percent F float, even is a double, is like this. So let's move forward. Then I would have for unit, unit equals, percent d decimal exactly like in cc plus plus and finally i would have the my uh, description description equals and then i have percent s exactly like in cc plus plus and here i would say yes i have to replace each percent so yes i want to see the price of this product how many units from this product and finally, what is the name of this product that I'm reading from the file? Now, I have read only the first record. In the second iteration of while true, the second record, and so on and so forth. I have only three records. What, what I want to highlight and to achieve in here is to calculate the total of this invoice as stated in the beginning. So therefore, I need uh, this total that I have, let me show you, uh, stated in here, this total. I want to be modified and I would say total plus equal. So equal with itself plus in addition. In addition, I would have something like unit multiply with price, right? So I'm going to write it down and I would say unit multiply with price. And finally, once I have it like this, okay. When I'm going into catch exception, actually this is a, I'm putting quotes, good exception. So I know for sure when I'm getting in here, I finished with my file. So first of all, I should be ready in here, for instance, to say, okay, I, I, I'm reading, I read the invoice. So all I want to do is to display the total. So I'm going to say something like system out, not uh, printed the exception because I know the exception is in the file. So system out print line is the total from the function. So total equals, and then I'm concatenating the total. And second of all, I want to close the connection to the file on the hard disk. Therefore, in dot close. That's it. Good, finally. Now, because I did this, when I'm going into the program and immediately I'm going to commute to each one of your screen, I have in this combo box of play, right? I have here, as you can see, prog main OPIO, which is true. So when I'm running this, as you can see, I have write on the disk and then I have read and display what? T-shirts, 12 items of 10 US dollars or euro or lay, whatever you want. Yes, can last lines. Okay, of that method, please. Yes, of course. So stop a little bit. I'm going back. Okay. Okay. Give me a few seconds. Invoice. Now it's fine. Can you see it? Okay. Should I explain again with this sketch that I have it in here? I can explain, guys, I can explain better if you want to uh, open with a hex viewer. Uh, Sabrina, do you have a hex viewer or should I download it from the internet for you? Sabrina. Let me. Let me go in here and I'm going guys to show you. So download. H then. Yes. Ah, very good. Could you open, please? Because you know where you have installed the hex viewer. Ah, oh, very good. Good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Look, guys. So if I'm going into this file and now is recording, this is good. 
This is the seminar that we did in here in this Java workspace. Okay. And as you can see, I have created this test too. So if you are work, watching right now at the time and hour, and you are watching again into the prog main OOP, and I'm going to commute again, is test2.txt. This is the thing I wanted to have. I'm leaving like this for the guys that are still uh, writing down. And here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag and drop this test2.txt into hex viewer. Give me a few seconds. Drag and drop. Right. So as you can see in here, and now I'm going to explain together with the source code, paying attention and write down what is left for you. So, right. I did what? I did a file input stream and then a data input stream because the bytes that I'm reading, I want to have access at the int level, double level, object level, string, UTF level, and so on and so forth. So I'm opening a file like this, which is binary. And then first of all, I'm reading a double. Take a look on line 101. Right, so I'm reading this double in the first iteration, which means eight bytes. Therefore, as you can see, from zero zero to zero seven, exactly, I'm going to select this is eight bytes. Right, then I read this, which is a um, a float number, a double number, is eight bytes. Then I'm reading a int. So imagine yourself, you are an operating system, you are receiving a software interrupt, and you have you are being instructed by JVM Java via operating system to read another four bytes and you are reading them is this C in hex you know very well means 12 and 12 means I have my 12 t-shirts then finally is coming read UTF you read universal text format tag 00 length seven bytes which means seven letters look here 54 which is T dash 2d in hex is my dash and then i have shirt right 53 blah 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 till where is starting the next iteration in my while through what i'm what i'm doing for each iteration i'm printing out on each iteration the record of the price and of the units and of the shirt which happens already then i'm moving forward to in while through to the second iteration and into the second iteration i'm reading another eight bytes then I'm reading another four with reading how many, for instance, mugs I have. Eight, as you can see in here. And my mug is a UTF, is a string starting with zero, zero, three letters. And look here is the mug is selected, capital M U G. So 4D7567. And finally, I'm reading for the third time in my while true. Uh, eight bytes from here, eight bytes from here. Then I'm reading another four bytes of pens, so which means the units of how many pens in my invoice, nine pens. And finally, again, a UTF, I have a three letters, but this time with pen with capital P. And finally, I have red, I'm going to obtain an exception, and my exception is throwing me in here. What I'm going to do? For each iteration, I did unit multiply with price and in addition to the total. So I have my total of my invoice in terms of total and I'm displaying on the screen. And finally, I'm closing the file exactly like I'm doing myself right now with H, H then a few moments, right? So I'm closing the file and finally I'm moving forward. So that's it. It's everybody okay? Got this point? Okay. Then if yes, I'm going to do this. So run again in here, run the prog main, and all everybody of you should obtain 289.0 US dollars or euro or whatever uh, coin you want to use in your uh, business logic. So this is one thing. Now when I'm running the J unit, so this J unit evaluation, then I'm going to obtain everything was fine, so into my J unit, all four tests are green in this moment because I did the right implementation. And now with this all three in green, we can discuss about evaluation. Till now was certain for me and it was very sure for me that, yes, Ioana, I'm going to take a look immediately that uh, you did not implement correctly. Now, let's move forward because we are running out of time and let's go to the... Uh, guys to the colleagues that have problems uh, because I assume otherwise all other colleagues run okay. So Joanna, could you please share your screen to see your problem? And meanwhile, I'm preparing Kahoot for the presence, right? Joanna, so please share your screen. 
Mm. Joanna, Joanna, good. What is your problem in here, Joanna? Let's see. Mm. Yes, nice. Let's move into this. Uh, Joanna, I'm going to request a remote control to you. Please allow me. And let me see in here. So you have like this, you have like this. And I want to see first of all, if it's running correctly. So result, what do you obtain for result? So total, okay, finish IO. I don't want, I, I, I don't see this. So I'm going to cut this space, backslash N to see better, save and I'm going to run again. So run, not JUnit. I want first of all to run my program, fine. So left click, right click, run as Java application. So you see, it's not correct because I have my total in here, but I did not return. You have an error because then all of you, another person that have, I just control. So I'm going into this method again is because your method is returning void, right? So not return double, wait a second. You Here, you are returning not void, sorry. You are returning zero. Of course, I have to return total, right? So, and then how I imagine this, how I get to this point, because I had total, actually double results equals, and I had zero. This was the first thing. And because of this thing, my J unit was not able to obtain this value. And because it was not able to obtain this value, of course you had an error. Now, when I'm running actually J unit, everything is going to be great. Congratulations. Okay, so very all. Okay, everybody should see here, everything is going to be green. Okay. If, uh, could you please expand this? I, is not listening to me. You are controlling Joanna's screen, but Joanna, could you expand please here? Click on this. Anyway, so you have right now green. So look, yes, you don't have blue anymore because I have answered to you. That method, instead of returning the proper value of calculation was returning anytime, anywhere, zero value, right? Let's move forward. Who else is having issues, is having problems? Who else? I assume otherwise, besides the guys that did not have installed on the me, please share your screen. Yeah, you're welcome, no problem. Okay, so may I get your control? So let's see. From the errors we are learning best, believe me. Or from the errors we are learning best. Look, what is saying in here, stream is closed, right? If I'm going into invoice, Java 101 in here is saying, guys, when you are entering in here, your stream is closed, which of course you cannot read from something what is closed. You see this line, I'm going to delete and I'm going to be chill and I have it in here in closed. Right now I'm saving this, could you run again? And meanwhile, I think you got the idea with, uh, okay. Your output numbers are different, let's see. Okay, and returning total. Total, you are, just give me one moment, one moment. Total is zero. Here you are incrementing, therefore you had issues in the writing into the file. Let's see in here. Again, you write something in a file which you already closed, which makes no sense. Are you agreeing? So it's clear if you are closing something, you cannot write down into it, right? And not inside the form, but outside the form. When you finish to write down into the file, then you are closing the file, right? Please let me know if you that, that do not agree. Run again. Good. Now let's move forward. It's okay like this, right? If you want, you can stay after and can discuss about JUnit in IntelliJ idea, right? Let's not, uh, yeah, thank you. Let's not spend some time. Who else? Who else is having issues? May I switch on Romanian language? I'm going to pause the recording. <laughs> 